Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Uh, thank you for having us tonight. My name is uh, Attorney Dan Toscano. I have a law office located at 60B Commercial Wharf East, Boston, Mass. I here representing the owners of 420 Commercial Street and Joe Caragall and his niece, uh, Nicole Griffin. I think they're in the, they're in the back row here. I believe everybody knows who they are. They've owned this property for many years and owned a number of other properties in the neighborhood and made it many other residential properties here in the neighborhood. Today, we respectfully request in your support to change the current occupancy, the current use of that location from what's, what was a gas station to offices and the restaurant. Uh, it's a two, but for those who are not familiar with it, it's at the corner of Hanover Street and Commercial Street. It's the former location of the mobile gas station and maybe more recently those who remember the former location of Boston by Segway. And Segway has been gone for about a year now, a little bit more than a year. The second floor is office space. The office space is not being changed. It's been office space for many years. Um, Nicole and the owners of the operation use that as their legal offices, so that has not changed. It's no work to be formed on, this, on the second floor. On the first floor, we are requesting a restaurant with use item 36A, which is for takeout purposes, and also for seasonal outdoor seating for approximately 30 seats. Indoor will have approximately 54 seats um, in, in the restaurant. Tell you a little bit about Joe and, um, and Nicole. Uh, like I said, they, have owned, they own and operate many uh, residential units in the neighborhood. I think most recently, uh, responsible landowners, and I think they've showed how responsive they are to the community and the community needs when it came to the segways. I think the issue came a lot of concerns about segways being operated on our streets and the neighborhood had a lot of concerns and opposed having segways there. The landlord stepped up to the plate, made a commitment to this neighborhood that they would not renew the lease at that location for segways. And by making that commitment to this neighborhood, the, the place has been vacant and the landowner lost about it over a years of rent. So over that last year, I've been looking for not only a responsible tenant, but a viable tenant, a tenant that's gonna be able to stay there and maintain staying there, but a responsible one. And we found that in Damien DePaulo, who's represented here by attorney Bill Ferrell, who everybody knows. Uh, for those who don't know Damien, and maybe Bill will elaborate a little bit more, Damien is a resident of the North End uh, neighborhood, owns property here in the neighborhood, number of properties, but lives in Lanthrop Place, which is right off of Hanover Street, which is behind his restaurant, Tomalina's. He also owns and operates uh, Vito's Tavern. Responsible owner, respond and I think if you go by both establishments, you'll see how clean and well run it is. I went, I went to the ZLC, which is the Zoning Licensing and Subcommittee, um, meeting of the North End Waterfront Resident Association and I got a chance to hear from some of the abutters and some of the concerns. And some of the major concerns about about this particular location, this particular site. So people were generally, so there were some folks that were generally opposed to the restaurant being used there. That's a site and the, and the concern was it wasn't an area that had restaurants. Um, but that is an area that did house restaurants and there, there was a number of restaurants that were there in the past and maybe it's since been gone. But there was some, so I'll address some of the concerns I heard closing out. People have concerns that people heard there was gonna be a 2 a.m. closing out. Damien is making a commitment that he will abide by the good neighbor agreement of the North End Waterfront Neighborhood Council, which is 11 during the weekday and 12 on the weekend. And at, at no time there was there ever an intent to remain open until 2 a.m. And also in regards to the seasonal outdoor seating, they're required by the city to have close down that outdoor seating um, at 11 o'clock, which uh, Damien has agreed to do so. There was also a concern, people had concerns that is there gonna be a roof deck? There was never a proposal for a roof deck on that particular site. Um, it, it just couldn't happen, not only because if you have a roof, roof deck out to a seating, the city requires that the food be, this house should be continuous to your location. And in this location, it's just not possible to put a roof deck for this restaurant since it'll be on the first floor. The, um, we also had some concerns about the trash in the area and people that go out in, in the <coughs> commercial street and Hanover Street, there's cups and paper plates and everything else. Uh, Damien is making a commitment to, he's gonna redo the front, he's gonna be a tremendous upgrade to that particular location, beautifies the location, um, he'll make sure that the, the area is always kept clean, he's gonna brighten it up, make sure that it's safe for our neighborhood. We've, hit, we've had a number of concerns and we talk about cars break-ins, we talk about um, 
maybe some sexual assaults that we've heard in this neighborhood. I think by having a good responsible owner um, with some light in that area will curtail maybe some of that um, that behavior that we don't want in our neighborhood. Um, the other, so the issue is trash, keeping it keeping it clean. Damien has made a commitment that he will not only keep his establishment clean, but make sure that the outside and the sidewalk is also clean. Trash pickup daily. There'll be trash barrels that will be remain inside the premises until it's brought out at night, and then it will have deliver, trash pickup will be every every morning daily. The other questions that came up was pest control. Uh, made a commitment. He always con already contracted with a company that twice a month will will uh, pest control uh, in that particular location, make sure it's clean. Um, another um, issue that we heard was the venting. Where would the vents be? Because there are apartments, especially that may affect 414. I believe it's 414 Commercial Street. We will bring the vent to the closest part of the building towards Hanover Street, so it'll be the furthest away from that particular building. I think the biggest issue of what the landlord was looking for is to get a tenant in there, that a viable tenant, a tenant that's going to be able to stand, stay there and not have a turnover every six months. We see a lot of retail establishments here in the neighborhood that can't withstand the rent on Hanover Street, on Salem Street, and they're gone in six months. And this is not the intent that I think we've got uh, a tenant that, like I said, that only, not only lives in the neighborhood, that invests in our neighborhood, is concerned about the quality of life in our neighborhood, but, uh, and but also an experienced business owner. Um, prepare to answer any questions. I do have, Mr. President, I have <coughs> close to 70 letters that are signed by a butters in that particular area and elsewhere in the neighborhood. I'll scan them all and I'll email them to you tomorrow. But sign letters that we have. And we've been meeting with about it, and I think you'll see there's a lot of support for that particular area. I, I guess I'll start. Um, the, the original plans that I received had a roof deck on it. Is that something that the, you the, There's the original plans that I don't think there's ever been a roof deck. I mean, I didn't get all these. Well, that's not a roof deck. What is it there? It's the outside seating. That, that's a site plan from George Collins, and that's, that's the indoor seating. That was just a plot plan that we had to file. So there's, there's no rooftop seats. The plans that you got from the architect, or the Kipper and associates, that they, the, so there's no roof deck. All right. Um, Attorney Toscano, I noticed from the proposed restaurant plan, I don't know if it can be called up on the uh, screen, that you mentioned seat, the 54 seats, I believe, in the proposal for this restaurant. Um, about 18 of these seem to be around a bar, or at least dining, two different bar areas. There is a dining bar that's located inside here, as you can see, which would be my right. And then there's a little, the kitchen, which is an open kitchen, there's approximately five seats that are, that are there. Could you define dining bar? I'm not uh, familiar people, with the term. Well, as you see in many restaurants, especially today, in particular in this area, you live in this neighborhood, you walk to any restaurant now, people enjoy sitting <coughs> and dining at the bar area rather than sitting at a table. So just, we have a lot of young professionals, we have a lot of people that may be dying by themselves, that dine with, with another person that prefer not to sit at tables, and it's just a, it's a nice way to sit. We're, you know, we're gonna propose to have some TVs there so people can sit, dine, and, and at the, the dining bar. So this and is as you see in a lot of the restaurants, you have Brico, you have Luca, you have, you have Florentine, you have, you know, I too, and, and it goes on. Everybody, today's restaurants and the upscale restaurants are uh, creating a dining bar. So this bar would not be in use for simply alcohol consumption while food is not being served. Okay. This is with the, the license. The licensing board can put any provision they want as of right now. Right now, there is no license. We haven't applied for it to be able to uh, look a license. We haven't been able to purchase a license. We haven't gone through that step yet. But as of right now, no, you'll be able to go at the bar and have a drink unless the, the city puts a proviso on it. And that has been done, you know, to other licenses, but I think we see more in today's licenses that that proviso has not been put on it because sometimes I think it's just not practical today. I think people enjoy going out having a drink prior to sitting down and having their food, and people enjoy having an after-dinner drink. 
if you put a proviso on it where you have to have food with your meal, it, it, it is, a, is a tough uh, proviso, and I think you've been seeing that from the licensing board. Um, can you see the letters and signatures right now? Yeah, I can. Uh, and the top page is just the names and addresses of those who signed them, and then we put all the letters behind them, and I will email them to the president tomorrow. Yeah, what kind of restaurant is it going to be? It's going to be Italian restaurant. Oh. <laughs> Dan, Dan, I noticed on the right side there's uh, what looks to be the existing garage door to the old gas station. It looks like there's a similar door. There's going to be two. And will those be open in season, good seasonal weather? Yes, they will. But um, the tenant has committed that you know there won't be any ampl amplification outside. So no speakers out there. Um, so no music no inside the room. The tenant plans on having some background music and TVs, which will have to get an entertainment license, but nothing will be outside. And also the, the ceiling and the walls will be soundproof when he does the remodel. Yeah, given the, uh, the history of the, the property, you want to go into a little bit of the 21 environmental? Well, I, what I can tell you that, as everybody knows, uh, everybody may know there was a gas station there. It's, it's, it's been cleaned and many years ago, I think 2001. I'm not sure. When, when did we think some tanks have been removed? 2008. 2008. 2008. 2008. <laughs> tanks have been removed. There's a number of tanks. Tanks have been removed. The site is clean. And uh, that's pretty much it. So. You mentioned a TV in the bar. Is there a. Um, any other questions from the board? I just, I, I, just, I, just, I just wanted a clarification of what Ryan, I think, was asking about opening the um, windows of the interior. Um, first of all, I assume the entrance is this location here. It seems to be blocked by some of the seats. But would this be shut at 11 o'clock as per the outdoor noise agreement? Does the city require you to shut at the same time? The city does not, but like I said, our closing hour is 11 on the weekday, 12 on the weekend. Can you just go into detail? It's a public need for outdoor seating. The public need for the outdoor seating? I think what you see, you see a location that has the capacity to have outdoor seating. I think a lot of diners, especially in the summertime, in the spring, in the fall, when you get some nice weather, prefer to sit outdoor, and if, especially if you have a location like this where you have a nice square footage of space outdoor, people prefer it. And I think if more, you know, you can see with the outdoor seating that we have, the limited number of restaurants that have outdoor seating, it, it's tough to get in there. People prefer to sit outdoor. Is alcohol going to be served outdoor? Sure, absolutely. With the dining area. With food? With food, outdoor seating? I, I, once again, if the city puts a proviso that food has to be served with beverages, then the tenant will have to, <laughs> the license holder will have to comply with those uh, provisions. And I, we've gotten, as you know, I'm sure, um, a lot of response from the increase in alcohol licenses that are coming in the North End. What if the abutters or otherwise, what has been the response that you've received for allowing someone else to, again, have another alcohol license? Have I received? I think I'm the question is the, the, well, the butters. There, there's been a you know there's been a number of the buzz. I think you'll hear from today. There's a lot of buzz that are here in, in support of the location and the use of that particular location. Um, I think it beautifies the location and <coughs> here and it beautifies that area. Some of our folks would love to, to go in there and have more of a local establishment that they can go to. I mean, you, you get the hustle and bustle really the other end of Hanover Street, and people will enjoy. Um, many of our locals going into that particular area of, of Hanover Street. The, you know, I, and I also heard some, some some opposition to it. Of course, absolutely. I mean, people are concerned. They don't want another restaurant in the area. Um, the noise, the late night noise. I think by agreeing to the good neighbor um, hours uh, addresses that issue. I think we all know the late night noise that we hear. You know, it, it, when we say late night noise, it is late night. It's two, three, four in the morning, and. It, it, we have a tremendous amount of students. We have a lot of young professionals that are out coming from the Fania Hall area and now the Seaport area and, and other places. We have a lot of house parties in the area, and I, and I, and I think David talked about that. There's a lot of house parties. 
I mean, I think that's where the noise is. I, I don't think it's from our diners that use our business establishments and our fine, fine establishments uh, enjoying a nice, fine, quick meal. Dan, Dan, what would you say to those that, as we all know, I think I, pretty much everyone here knows enough about Hanover Street. Obviously, it's quite busy. And then I would say once you go down, going towards the 7-Eleven and towards the Coast Guard base, once you get down to about, let's say, roughly restaurant in Lucia's, that's basically the last of the restaurants. And then it's a bit quieter, it seems, just as far as the types of businesses are there. What, if anything, do you have to say in response to those that live there? And I would say, you know, that's probably one of the last corners or two block area roughly, where it still seems to be mainly residential, where that is increasingly, <coughs> that's not the case. What would you say in response to? Well, it's been in the area that had a number of restaurants, but those who are lifelong residents of in the area. Gerald's was there for many, many years. You had Natalie's restaurant was across the street. You had, uh, there, was the, there was the sandwich uh, shop that was across the street in the same loop location for many years. I mean, even not before my time, but I was a kid. Yeah, the Blue Front, yeah, I believe remembers that. Um, the Blue Front was there uh, many years. So there's been a number of restaurants. I think the, the important points here is we have a building, a two-story building. There are many uses that the, the landowner could put there that doesn't want to put there that thinks that it might be more of a disturbance by maybe going up to 55 feet and then you're going to block you know, going up to a property lines and you're gonna block windows, you're gonna have a problem there. A local, you know, maybe retail store, you might have problems there. So we were trying to find not only a viable tenant that can maintain the rent at that location, but a responsible one, somebody. And, and we, we believe we found that in Damien DePaulo, who who's an experienced business owner and a resident of the neighborhood. And who else more do we want? Someone who lives here and can be hands-on and also who someone who runs two successful businesses. What kind of license are you guys trying to try to get? We want a court. Are you going to buy one or? Oh, okay, we, don't, we don't know until it comes available. We don't know until the zoning process is open. We'll apply for the online court until the funds available. We'll take that and we'll purchase the court. Any other questions? Yeah, and I think we list of letters here, I just want to point out um, the directive letters, which I would consider 464 Hanover, 454 Hanover, and 414. You got uh, one letter of support, two letters of support from 414 Commercial Street 1A, who was a non-resident of that building. Out of the 16 units of 464, you got two letters of support. And then of the eight units in 454, there were zero letters of support, which I consider the directive letters. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, no, I, I agree. If you look at that list, there's a m number of them that are in that general area. Um, this affects the, the entire neighborhood. There are a number of letters that include people that live in the neighborhood, don't necessarily have to live right above it, but I, there's support letters from uh, our neighbors. Any other questions from the board? Okay, uh, so I know one of the... Um the budding properties is for 14 Commercial Street. And how many people are here from that building? Can you just raise your hand? All right, so I'm going to call on Steve and Etsy, who's uh, a trustee of that, that building, to speak on behalf of all of them. They sent some slides over. Um, so just to kind of re refrain from repeating everybody over and over again, I want him, him to speak for that building, and then we can hear from the rest of uh, the So, Steve, you want to call? Sorry. All should be in uh, I'm, uh, I'm Steve Venezia. I live in 414 and I'm a trustee for that building. I've lived there for over 23 years. Uh, and I lived uh, just a block over on 10th Street for another seven years before that. Um, so I've pretty much my entire adult life has been here in the North End. My family has lived here uh, for over a century. My dad grew up on, on uh, Fleet Street. So my, my family's been here for quite a long time. And uh, uh, we love the North End, and we love the residential character of our end of the North End. Uh, we do have four primary concerns, and if I was Mr. Toscano, I would try to minimize them as well. Uh, there will definitely be an increase in late night noise. Uh, we are concerned that there will be an increase in garbage and rodents and the odor that would necessarily come from the kitchen uh, in the restaurant. Uh, we have some real concerns about traffic congestion and safety issues. Um, they told us point blank that they do hope to have, uh, if they get their usage, 
a um, uh, takeout um, capability for the restaurant. And right across the street, you have 7-Eleven. And as anybody who lives from the fire station down to the corner of commercial, you know how many people are constantly double parking to run in to buy cigarettes, buy the paper, buy uh, a six pack or whatever at the 7-Eleven. And we have real concerns that you're gonna have, that's gonna be magnified by double parking constantly on both sides of the street. And that, that'll be a real uh, public safety issue for the fire trucks that exit down commercial and sometimes have to go down battery because they can't, the hook and ladder can't make the, make the, the swing onto commercial to get out of the neighborhood to go to Charlestown or some other, other uh, uh, part of the city. So um, that would be too attractive a nuisance and that gives anybody who lives on our end a uh, certain degree of discomfort. Um, uh, and we also had some concerns about the expected new tenant. So, next slide. Um, to just elaborate on the increase in the light noise, um, you know, the increased noise from both restaurant patrons as well as the early, uh, the early morning and late night trash pickup. Um, we already hear some of that across the street with the hotel when they come and uh, pick up trash at um, five in the morning. So anybody in our end of the neighborhood is going to get a, a double dose of, of that kind of uh, noise, and you know it's it's a problem. Well, we also have worries about the um, uh, the 30 seat seasonal outdoor seating area. Um, as uh, uh, Mr. Kenny said earlier, um, the plan is that there be two large garage doors that would allow for an essentially open restaurant front. Now. They can minimize and say there's not going to be any loud music, but necessarily the, the music is going to come out of those two uh, garage bays where, the, where the, the auto mechanics used to work on the cars. It's not just a little door. Those are pretty large, and there's going to be a lot of noise coming out. And when we did speak with uh, uh, um, Nicole and the ComServe people, um, they, they let us know that uh, if it's available, the new tenant is expected to apply for a 2 a.m. with the license. So that gives us pause. Next slide. Uh, this section of the North End is one of the few truly residential neighborhoods uh, left. Um, as you know, pretty much as one of the board members said, once you get past the fire station, the noise level drops significantly. And yeah, I remember, because I was in the neighborhood, I remember when Jero's was there, where the 7-Eleven is now. That was almost 50 years ago. It went out in like 1968. Uh, there was the Natalis there, didn't last for a couple of years. There was sort of a takeout place, the Parma, that was there a couple of years. So historically, once you get to the fire station, and St. Stephen's, Lucia's, all the way down, it is a very different neighborhood. It is significantly quieter, and we want to keep it that way. The properties adjacent are all residential. Our building at 414, four Holden Court that abuts in the back where they, the, where they have some spare parking. Uh, 434 through 464 on Hanover Street that face the open lot. Uh, and 8 Battery Street and 10 Battery Street, once you go around the corner, all those buildings back up on the, uh, uh, the site. Next slide. This will give you, a, well, unfortunately it's a little small, but this gives you some sense of all, our building is the one directly above, and you'll see arrows, those are all bedroom windows and pretty much all the five other buildings that, that back up on the parking lot are, as you would expect, those are the bedrooms in the backs of the apartments. And they're all gonna be right over this 30 seat thing, uh, you know, terrace in the summertime, and uh, just the noise that you would expect from a, rest, a busy restaurant. Uh, next slide. And then directly across, and we have a number of abutters and neighbors here from Hanover Street, from uh, 454, 460. So all those buildings look directly into the into the lot, and they would hear, they would get the noise uh, full full uh, front. 
next. Uh, as we said, we you know there's going to be an increase in, in uh, the garbage and the rodents and the uh, odor. We, we're afraid about the leaving of the trash barrels out at night, that that's going to attract rodents and other pests. The early morning trash pickup, as we said, will disrupt neighbor's sleep. Um, despite the best efforts that I'm sure the, the uh, CompServe may try to uh, uh, get responsible removers, there's still going to be a lot of noise. It causes a racket. We hear it now with 7-Eleven and with the hotel. Uh, the proposed restaurant vents will be located directly below the bedrooms for 414 Commercial Street. Even though I've heard Dan say that they would try to move them, it's a matter of a couple of feet. It's still the whole back of, uh, of, of our building. Um, and then there's the, the, the increased foot traffic. And that's going to inevitably lead to uh, increased litter on the sidewalks. We see it already. And one of our concerns is with takeout um, that, and it's happened, and we, and we know it will happen despite the best efforts of, of uh, the landlords, that people inevitably will take food out and then they walk maybe a half a block and they sit on your stoop and eat their meal. I cannot tell you how many dozens, if not hundreds of times, I've had to clean up the stoops from half-eaten meals that they couldn't be bothered to walk across to the corner and then put them in the uh, big belly trash bins. And they leave it there with a, a beer can or a, or a beer bottle. So uh, having one that much closer is certainly not going to help us. Um, the uh, Next slide. Uh, the traffic congestion and the safety that I alluded to earlier. We are concerned about the double parked uh, takeout customers, the delivery vehicles, the possibility of an eventual valet parking stand is going to create increased traffic congestion on the already very busy corner of Hanover and Commercial Streets. This is just going to ex exacerbate the existing issues with the traffic and the double parking, as I said earlier, with the 7-Eleven across the street. And as I also said, uh, it poses a safety concern for the fire trucks as they're um, navigating the corner to exit out of, out of uh, commercial street. Next slide. Um, and we do have some concerns about the expected new tenant. Uh, a signed lease exists. We understand it's contingent upon the proposed zoning change with Mr. DePala for a new restaurant called Vesuvio's, as we've heard. Uh, the restaurant plants, as indicated to the abutters, they are subject to change. And we, of course, we're very, and I think, understandably leery as to just how open that means, subject to change. Uh, the neighbors have, concerned about, uh, have concerns about the expected new tenant's past behavior involving post-approval changes to restaurant plants. Next. Uh, Mr. DePaula came before Nunich and Nura back in January of 2011 for approval to open Vito's Burritos. But after you received the approval from both entities, Vito's Burritos all of a sudden became Vito's Tavern. And it featured several departures from the plans as they were presented to the two neighborhood boards. Where misrepresentations were made by the restaurateur in this instance, that calls into question the legitimacy of his current plans and his willingness to be a good neighbor. Next. Uh, as was stated in uh, one of the meetings of the other board, the question was asked whether or not there would be a bar in the restaurant. And similar to what you heard here, uh, it, was it was answered that there would most likely be a service bar. Next. Well, there's Vito service bars that exist today. It runs, if you walk by on Salem Street, it runs the whole back of the restaurant. Next. It was also asked uh, whether what how many televisions there would be in this restaurant that would be obviously emphasizing servicing of food. And the response was, well, there'll be one or two TVs on the first floor. Next slide. Well, as the Globe reported shortly afterwards, that Vito's Tavern is a sports bar with six flat screen TVs. It's a birth for those who want to have a beer. So all these things give us pause. Nicole Griffith, very pleasant. We met with her. ComServe, the trust that she represents. Well, 
I would argue with you that they failed to make a showing that there's a need for a zoning variance. 420 commercial is zoned for multifamily and local service use. This is consistent with the neighborhood history of small local retail and local services that are valued by the neighborhood. And what they mean by that is, it's small mom and pop businesses. A restaurant use is forbidden use on this property. It does not conform to the existing zone, zoning for this site. Griffith and Conserve would have to obtain a variance to change the zoning in order to have a restaurant open on the property. There are already dozens and dozens of restaurants in the North End, so there is no need for another one. However, the North End desperately needs to diversify local retail services that we do have. This will not do that. It will further make Hanover Street nothing but a noisy restaurant row on our end of the neighborhood, with less services that, that the neighborhood clearly does need. The last thing we need is another restaurant with an entertainment license and a liquor license in a predominant, predominantly residential section of the neighborhood. It's the responsibility of the petitioners, Griffith and Comser, to show why they need to get the property rezoned. That's not our burden. They have to prove that they can't find any potential tenant who would occupy the space in a manner that complies with the existing zoning use. In our prior discussion with them, as a Butters, Com, Griffith, and Comser made no show and offered no proof that they had even sought out any other tenants who might use the space in a way that would conform with the zoning use. So aside from all the other facts that this site would be a terrible spot for a restaurant, they failed to meet the legal standard to get a zoning change. So lastly, I would, I would ask the board respectfully uh, to vote in opposition to this rezoning of 420 Commercial Street. Again, the increase in the late night noise, the potential for uh, more litter, garbage, the rodents, the odor, the traffic congestion, the safety issues, and um, that we have some serious concerns about uh, uh, the new expected tenant actually following through on what he has pledged to do. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now we'll Please remember to say your name and your address. My question is about valet parking. Is there are there plans to have valet parking? Tenant commits that he won't seek valet parking. And the other question I had about the TV was address. Okay. Yes. Hi, my name is Sue Bivin, ST 105 Prince Street. Um, I'm just curious if um, the owner of the property has done their due diligence in trying to find a rental or a, a lease that um, is not forbidden in this area. And um, also, I have to agree, I don't think um, what you have uh, presented to us is enough of a hardship for the owner to trump the hardship of all the residents who are living in this area. Do you want me to respond at each one or you want me to well, I mean, in terms of the, has the tenant done his due diligence, I think the tenant has been a landowner for many years in this neighborhood. He knows this neighborhood. He knows what's um, leased and what, what's not. We thought we had a valid, a good tenant with the segways. You know, and city regulated the segways, I think, back in June of 2011, 2012. It became a, um, a forbidden use. Went to the neighborhood, neighborhood didn't want it. And, and he was responding. What did the, the landowner do? He was responsive to the needs of this neighborhood and made a commitment that he would not renew the lease of the segway. And, and what happened? He lost a year's worth of rent. Place is still vacant. Uh, he knows the neighborhood, works with many retailers, and, uh, realtors in the neighborhood, and he knows what can work in this particular area and what's not going to work. And I understand that people have concerns about a restaurant and we don't want any more restaurants or we have enough restaurants. What about a small retail store? What about a little a clothing store? We've seen that on Hanover Street, a shoe store on Hanover Street, clothing store. It doesn't work. The rents are too high. It just doesn't work. 
and you can't get a viable tenant. It doesn't work because there are so many bars and no one can compete with that kind of rent. Well, I mean, and the resale stores aren't working. I mean, they can't afford to stay at the particular at that because rent. So we're going to have a so tenant in there. They can't compete we're, with restaurants. Right, we're going to. But what should we do? We can put a tenant in there that's not going to be able to survive. And every six months, we're going to be back before the neighborhood asking for another change of use, change of use. I mean, the, the landowner has considered going up to fifty-five feet. Residential unit is, units are allowed, and we're going to hear from tenants in the bars and say we don't need more more students in the neighborhood we're gonna we have windows that overlook the property line of this particular uh, address and we're gonna we're gonna be able to put a 55 foot building in and we're gonna get opposition because we're gonna block the bedroom windows of the tenants at 414 but but I understand but you don't their concerns, variance but, for that so that is a conditional use so. yeah, it, I think it's allowable it's, well, yes, it'd be it conditional is. where you go so up. You be here yeah. for that. But we don't want to do that. Then that's not the intent. Homeless shelter is an allowable use, I believe, in that site. We don't want to do that. I mean, not that he, the landowner would consider that, but there are other uses, you know. But we want to find what's best for this neighborhood, a, vi a good viable tenant that can stay there long term, and it's going to be a good <coughs> tenant and, and, a good, and a good neighbor, which I think he's shown in. in with his establishments. Look at Kamalina's, how well it runs. Never, I don't believe there's any violations that he's gone that that location. I mean, I'll, I'll let Attorney Ferrulo speak on behalf of his expertise and professionalism, but we, I think I answered your question. I don't want to continue. Any other questions, sir? My name is Helen Zobel. I'm an uh, resident of 414 Commercial Street. May it please the board. I think Attorney Toscano put his finger on it when he said that one of the attractions of the place, the area, as opposed to what he described, I think, as the noisier end of Hanover Street, is that this is a nice, quiet area. Well, it is quiet except for a couple of times a year when there's a feast. It happens that the construction, that is the the layout of Hanover Street and the buildings at that end means that you get echoes, very loud echoes, which means that when you have, you said, 54 people inside and 30 people outside and music, that's a lot of noise coming into what is essentially a closed area. And my serious concern is that what we are going to have is a feast, not for a weekend or two weekends, but from the first warm day in April until the last warm day in October, seven nights a week. And that will destroy the neighborhood. It won't To address, Mr. President, if I may, and I, just to address, and, and I respect the, the concerns of, of the bodies, absolutely. Um, the 2 a.m. tenants make a commitment, 11 p.m. the weekdays, I'll reiterate, 12 on the weekends, limit, no 2 a.m. Uh, there may be a license um, that, if there's a license to purchase, there may be an existing license, and the license board has every right to curtail that down to the closing hours that he's committed to this neighborhood. Um, <coughs> Fire trucks, I think we, we talked about fire trucks, fire at the fire station been on Hanover Street for many, many years and able to navigate through the streets of the North End, especially Hanover Street and Salem Street where we see a lot of uh, our restaurants on that area. Um, the, the, the music, um, we're not talking about live entertainment, we're not talking about loud music as you see in the rest of uh, maybe some establishments, we're talking about some background music that you have in some of our restaurants. Background music, that's it. And, you know, um, not loud disco music or uh, dance music. This is not a, this is a dance restaurant, so background music. Just to clarify, though, uh, you said that the petitioner doesn't have any violations on his license. I, um, I'll, I'll let the attorney, I don't believe the, um, when I talk about Kamalini. He's never, is, never had one. Yeah. We've had one hearing recently uh, on a technical issue at uh, Beatles, having <coughs> uh, service uh, 
what is a cordial, what is a cordial, and something that's going on in the city right now. Uh, is it uh, it's a technical issue that has to do with a definition of sugar content and drinks. So uh, that's the only issue that works with us. I've owned nine liquor licenses for 25 years. And that is the first violation. And it was, and it was, no, the other one was for the entertainment license. No, you also had a, um, there's a violation in 2012 for reduced prices and alcohol. I've read it, I went to the place and worked Yeah, that was, that was an error on their part because the prices were the same prices that were on the menu. You served a one day suspension, right? Right, it did. Well, I just, just went there and I accepted it, but it was the same prices as the things on the menu. Furthermore, I've had the uh, violation of the cordials, the liquor company wrote a letter and stating that it was their mistake that they sent me that bottle. They told me it was a cordial. And it was displayed on the bar, it wasn't hidden. And also, the officers that came in were invited to look into my office where we keep all the liquor and to look everywhere. And that was it, that's the only thing they found. One other thing, Mr. Venezia, I gotta say is that you really like to embellish and you know, a lot of things that you're saying are kind of inaccurate. I'm gonna start with the fact that we went to see you, you and Mr. Kenny, and the first thing you said to us when we came into your office was we don't want any more restaurants. You didn't ask us if we'd like a drink of water, didn't ask us if we wanted a cup of tea or a coffee. Those were the first words out of your mouth, was we don't want a restaurant. I've never, ever asked for a 2 a.m. full liquor license, and I don't have the money to buy a full liquor license. Those licenses, if you guys don't know already, are $300,000. And while I'm up, I just want to address some of the things he said, because oh, I find he was very, very aggressive, and I, I think he kind of you know, twisted a few of the things, and I don't appreciate that. Just and I'm not going to sit here and take this. Dean Indy Powell, one lap to the place. Um, they circulated a flyer saying that we wanted a roof deck and that we wanted a full liquor 2 am license, when that has never been the case. I'm sorry you couldn't read the plans right, but your plans do not have a roof deck on them, and they never did. You have the same plans that I had that my architect drew. Um, you address the traffic. Well, do you prefer cars that are renting spaces pulling in and out of there? Or do you prefer just the cars the way they are without cars pulling in and out of there? Well, Mr. Venezia, I'm kind of addressing this too. I would appreciate it if you would look at me. I looked at you and I, and I paid attention to you when you were speaking. You know, I gave you that respect. Um, we came here just to hear your concerns and, and, and to try to, you know, maybe amicably achieve something. And you guys were just negative and anti right from the get-go. That was not a way to, to go into a meeting, you know? Um, as far as, as garbage, I don't know if you've been to any of my restaurants, sir, but my garbage barrels are cleaner than the new barrels that you buy. We rinse out those barrels every single day. We sweep and we scrub it from both of our places. We have pest control twice a month, whether we need it or not. We have probably two of the cleanest restaurants in the North End. As far as that corner goes, my daughter lives right across the street from that corner. Um, that's a dark corner. What I'm proposing to bring, that, to bring to that corner is light, greenery, shrubs, and an attractive place. We do have a drawing for it. I'm not, you know, we came to discuss where to put the venting with you, you know, where it wouldn't bother you. We, we discussed putting the venting all the way to the end so it wouldn't interfere in any of any of you know your your view of the garage or the segway because that is your view it's of the garage or the segway i'm proposing to give you a view of a garden and of a nice clean establishment garbage gets picked up every day for commercial every day i wish that i wish that a lot of the residents not not you people it's always a lot of the younger people people don't know the garbage days but i wish a lot of the residents really took care of the garbage the way that i do we bag everything, we put it in sealed containers. You know, we're gonna have draft beer, so there won't be any bottles clanging. Our garbage will get picked up when 7-Eleven's garbage gets picked up, when the hotel gets picked up, all at that same time. They come by and they empty the garbage. That's been going on for 100 years in the North End. You know, it's funny, would you approve something in somebody else's area of the North End? Or is this just because it's in your area of the North End and just disturbing you? You know, other things are being built and go up, is this, 
just about your section of the North End, Mr. Venezia, or is it about the entire North End? That's my question to you. And I don't appreciate the allegations, because it's either hearsay or you're fabricating things. Whoever circulated that flyer did it all based on hearsay, nothing factual at all whatsoever. <coughs> Have you ever eaten in any of my restaurants, sir? No. No, okay. Well, that's a shame, because you'll find out that if you come to any of my restaurants, we do not serve people just alcohol. They have to eat something. And that's not imposed by the city. That's self-imposed. If a regular comes in, like you know, any of these guys come in, or they want to come in, they want to come in for a beer, of course I'm going to serve them. Vito's and Carmelinas do not cater to young kids that stay out late and make a lot of noise. That's why they go to Faneuil Hall. My two restaurants cater, and because my prices are higher, my prices are a little bit higher at Vito on the draft beers. Why? For the main reason is I don't want to do volume if it involves having drunk kids. We have never served a minor. We've never had any violence or any incidents in those places. So for you to categorize my establishments as drinking establishments, <coughs> you're way off base, sir. You don't know me, and you don't know any of my businesses. I don't appreciate the way that you presented yourself today and the way you presented yourself when we came as gentlemen and as businessmen to your office. You were very rude to us as you were and very and not courteous at all. And you're sitting on the board and you have a, a problem with this thing. I don't know how you can vote or do anything, to be quite honest with you. I have a lot more to say, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to be long-winded. But thank you. I'm really sorry, but I can't sit here and listen to false allegations. Are there any other My name is Bernardo Almond, and uh, we have to get together later because I'm also at the Sun, and I've uh, been here in the North End for about seven years. And I love it here, and um, I have good friends that are here too. I've been a, a, a customer of Nicole for about three years now. I know your establishments like really well, and my wife just married a few weeks ago. We love uh, Carmelina. Um, I am I not. I am not necessarily opposed to uh, uh, the restaurant. I am, however. What's your address, sir? 464 Hanover Street, uh, Unit 6. My only concern is that I am like um, 25 steps from where the outside city is. And uh, the 11 o'clock, if, if, if you told me that 11 o'clock, it's like uh, you know when they have the festival that they shut down the band at 10. I it's great. <coughs> but what I'm just afraid is that you know people are just gonna linger on, and you know if you start serving people at 11, they're still gonna have to finish their meals until uh, midnight. And I just want to say that like you know in this day and age where you know jobs are at a premium, I'm not gonna stand here. I'm an immigrant myself. Okay, I'm from Brazil. I'm not gonna say don't open a business. What I'm saying is that. You know, if there is anything that you can do to, uh, you know, allay the concerns of the people that are going to be leaving 25 steps, I mean, I counted it. That's my only concern. And just to qualify my statement, I am a computer programmer, a mountaineering guide, and I play in a band. And my wife that is a nurse in East Boston. I wake up every day at 5 a.m. So seasonal, 11 p.m. It's hard for me. So, you know, but then again, you know, I, I think that like this committee can come to a good agreement. I love your establishments. I hope that there can be something there, but I hope that I can sleep too. That's my point. Thank you. I, uh, just to address the, the legal aspect of the 11 o'clock closing hour, I'll do, that's city regulated at 11 o'clock, and you're required within 30 minutes to have it cleared out. So 11.30 is the latest that you have anyone on there. Uh, I, I wouldn't seek anyone uh, to dine, though. I would seek them so that they would be done by 11. I wouldn't seek someone to eat at like quarter of 11 or, or 10.30, and I would let them know that they would have to be done by 11, and I appreciate the way you addressed me. Thank you. Damon, was there any discussion about maybe eliminating the outdoor seating? It seems like that's a major issue with, with the noise. I mean, with that... I don't, I don't think there was any discussion about eliminating the, I think you got enough space there uh, by having the outdoor seating. It, it beautifies that particular outdoors. As you know, it's set back, and, I, and I'm guessing, maybe 30 feet, 40 feet, uh, 30, I don't know. 
I didn't measure it myself, but it's a nice space for outdoor seating. And I think any tenant who would go there, especially a person who wants to put a, a dining establishment, would want to utilize that space as outdoor because um, we got 30 seats. I mean, we, we can talk to the, the. I don't disagree with that. I mean, it's just beautify. We're going to be able to beautify, put put landscape the area, keep it clean. I mean, that is the goal. No, I don't disagree with that. It just seems that that's a major concern. So, like, to eliminate the noise. Yeah. If you, you know, I mean, I think that would be something that Damien and his attorney would discuss. I, I know you keep waving at me, but if the president could acknowledge you, I'm more than happy to stay here and answer the question. Patrice Macaluso, 440 Hanover Street. Um, are you talking about where they rent parking spaces in the back, where the fees? That's sometimes... a separate parcel. I think if you're looking at it to the right, is that what you're talking about? That's right. a separate parcel. That's not that, where it would that's go. That's parking. It would go in the front. Where right, the just in the front. That small area in the front. Okay. Thank but you. so that's separate parcel. It's also owned by the present landowner, but it's going to remain parking. Oh, okay, that's what I wanted. Okay. okay. Mr. President will address you. Can I? John, can I speak? I don't know who the president was uh, addressing. Can I ask you a question? Sure. What time is this going to be? 11 p.m. on the weekdays and 12 on the weekends. It's the restaurant itself? Oh, so, yeah, that's the closing Yeah. And outside seating. 11, 11 o'clock city regulations. And by 11 30, you have to have everybody off the, the outdoor premises. There's a hand up here. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm Stephanie Savitz. I own Savitz Studios at 456 Hanover Street with my sister. We are a small mom and pop business doing the retail thing, which is what you all claim that you love. For us, that end of the street is very quiet, but it is also dangerous and very dark. Knowing Damien for the four plus years that we've been in the North End, I trust that he's going to take that space on that corner, make it beautiful, plants. It's going to quiet. I think it'll make this, that part of the neighborhood more safe. I understand the concerns of the residents, but you guys, if you do want another retail store, I mean, it's a hard space to have a retail space. It's a hard <coughs> part of the neighborhood to maintain that, as you've all spoken on. If anyone is going to take that space on the corner that Damien wants to make a beautiful restaurant, I trust in his character and his past, Carmelina's and Vito's Tavern, that he's the person that you want to do it. When I'm closing up at night, it's 8 o'clock at night, there's nobody around. That's not safe for me. I don't see another young entrepreneur coming in across the street and wanting to have that space because it is dark. It's There's 7-Eleven, that's great. 7-Eleven is wonderful for last minute conveniences. <laughs> but it's not a safe area, there's no lighting. If you want some place, someone to make that place better, it's Damien Paul. Just to add, in terms of the safety, um, Tenant has agreed, at, I mean, and he does in his other establishment, put security cameras that not only the indoor but the outdoor, which will help with the public safety in that area and so curtail some of you know the issues that we face. I mean, anyway, yeah. I, I, Quick follow up. Do you live in that property? I do not. Do you live in the north end? I do not. Do you own the condo? We, but we do own four or five six houses. Do you want to address the we party you have the condo? Mr. Yeah. President, I think the landowner would like to say something which I believe would be appropriate. I mean, he is the My name is Joe Garrigal. I'm one of the owners of the property. And um, there's been bantering going back and forth that gives me the impression that um, I'm stuffing or we're trying to stuff this business down the throats of uh, the local residents. I grew up in the North End. I've been here my whole life. We own a lot of property in the North End. Um, as far as putting somebody else in that property, it's zoned garage and offices. Since we've taken the tanks out of the, t the ground, it's not viable for garages anymore. Um, we, t we took the garages out because it wasn't viable as a gas station anymore. Since when we have the problem with the North End, um, we were informed that Segway was breaking the law by having an establishment that wasn't zoned properly, which occurred after he went to the property. We diligently went to work at the city to try to get it legalized, and we informed him that I was not going to um, renew his five-year auction. When he found out we weren't in renewing the five-year auction, he never paid me. So I lost $90,000 in rent while he was still operating. Still paying my real estate taxes, still paying all my bills, never complaining to anybody because that was my choice. I wanted to sacrifice 
for the viable needs of the North End because they didn't like Segway. After a while, he ran against the rules. So I, I lost the $90,000 while he was running, while he was still operating and making the money. Then I marketed it for over a year. I had no viable options, nothing. Nobody wanted to open up a garage. Nobody would rent the space. It cost me $40,000 a year for taxes there and insurance. So in, to have a small business to operate that place, they can't, they can't pay the bills. If anybody remembers the old blue front, how many places have changed in the blue front? They can't make it. If I were thinking that I was going to abuse the neighbors, my, I own a property right behind it. My son's bedrooms are behind the gas station. I would not allow my sons, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to my sons, that they couldn't live at night or sleep at night. I, we came to the meeting to try to negotiate or to try to have some kind of a viable back and forth with the option of, of a, a zoning change. Um, it doesn't seem to be working that way. It seems to be all different. I mean, one of the statements that just, um, Mr. Venencia had said that they can't make the turn on Commercial Street with a fire truck with a hook and ladder. If anybody walks to the corner of Battery Street, are you going to tell me the fire truck, hook and ladder, would prefer to take the turn on Battery Street instead of taking it on Commercial Street? It has to be something that we all can live together. It has to be something that we can negotiate. It has to be a give and take but on both parts. Speaking of negotiations, we've, we've offered to, to take away the outdoor seating, and your tenant said absolutely not. So there, what, where is the room for negotiation? Well, it so how's that a negotiation to take away the outdoor seating? You can get and the why zoning. are you interrupting him when he's trying to finish his point? You can get the zoning change. But, but that, that's not, that's, there's other negotiations, but it's not the outdoor seating. The outdoor seating is the point of that space. It's a nice corner, and it looks horrible. And that's what everybody the here seating, is opposed to. Well, what about outdoor but, but seating during the day? Only? We're, we're addressing noise concerns. We're not going to seat anybody after a certain hour. The whole place is going to be soundproof. And the other thing is that there's going to be plants and shrubbery around it that will absorb some of the sound. And there won't be loud music. How's it going to be soundproof? You know I mean? There won't be inside shrubs around. The two will, open, will help that won't be keep sound out. Shrubs and trees, believe it or not, absorb sound. You didn't know that, Philip? Um, when you open two garage doors on a bar, yeah. there's going to be You've sound. You've done this before. Yeah. Any other questions? Am I done speaking? <laughs> As I said, uh, if, if you own a, 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 uh, an establishment, your family's been in the restaurant business many, many years, rightfully so, very respectful, always run top-notch operation. Under his business, under Damien's business plan, it's essential to have the outdoor speeding. If there's, if there's curtailing of time, if there's certain um, aspects of negotiation, how the outdoor seating can be um, still exists and still viable for the neighbors, then we can discuss that. That's all I'm saying. We, we all have to live together and we all have to understand each other's sides. It can't be a one-way avenue that has to be derailed. All plants have to be derailed. Thank you. But can you walk through the steps that um, that Mr. DePaolo has to take at this point? So we're meeting here to discuss the plans and to petition for well, here, here's rezoning, a, right? We filed a long-form application with inspectional services. The long-form application is, a, is an application for permit, which ultimately gets denied because it's a for, forbidding use. We filed for to appeal that decision from the inspectional service department to the zoning board of appeal and we're given a hearing date. That hearing date is June 17th. Okay, and without that hearing date, we'll present that proposal to the members of the Boston zoning board and they'll make a decision on our proposal. And what we're trying to do is to change the zoning which we're requesting from this board from what's the existing use right now to the office space which has been currently used as an office and I don't think everyone really has a concern about the current office space. Um, and from off, uh, to offices and restaurant use and the outdoor seating, seasonal outdoor seating. So that's what the board is going to approve, uh, uh, hopefully approve on the 17th. And then the license, the alcohol <coughs> license, a whole separate application, and that's something that the tenant and attorney for ruler will address at some time if he gets the approval to, for, 
start the meeting, then the next step would be to go in front of the board Zoning on board. June, um, June 17th. June 17th. Okay. There's you. also a new remedial on Thursday this week. Well, I have two questions. We'll uh, One question is, is the 11 o'clock closing time for the patio every night or just during the weekend and 12 on the weekend? I think that's, that it's every night. I mean, that's what the city requires. Every okay. four months requires. And what's the seasonal? Seasonal, what the seasonal, they usually allow you to sit people i think april 1 to uh, maybe september 30th i so think that's the season i don't think they allow it october is it it's a, to september 30th i think it might vary yeah, right. yeah, right. I, it's weather permitting i I've, been, I've done a couple outdoor patios in a lease with some city property it specifically says you have to make an agreement with the city in their lease agreement I, although this is private property they give you a time um I like Billy T, for example, I think it's April 1 to September 30th. <coughs> yeah, if, it's right if it's classified as seasonal realm, you have specific dates from, I don't know if it's April 1st or yeah. the 15th. No, because when the weather changes, it could be one, we'd have one day in like, you know, crazy months. And long but long if it's classified as seasonal, you will get particular dates. All right. There, there are some that are non seasonal, they're seasonal in nature because of weather permit. But if you specifically make it seasonal, you, you petition the board for certain dates, usually running between, as we're saying, you know, sometimes in April, just sometimes in October. I'll take one more question, then we're going to make a motion. Uh, my name is Sal DiGirolamo. I live at 100 Fulton Street. I am in full support of this restaurant. Um, I personally would live over any of his restaurants. And my question to all the people that oppose this. Would you still oppose it if it was your son, your sister, your nephew, or a friend of yours that wanted to do this? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nobody could vote on it. But, uh, they did. Um, is there anybody that wants a motion? Mr. President, I think it does. I think, uh, and again, uh, uh, people though we hear as potential future <coughs> tenants, uh, there has been an effort to hear this as to what it is. Keep in mind, this is one neighborhood. We're not little clusters of places that you know don't talk to the rest. In other words, you have the Hanover, you have the Notchie, et etc. We're one neighborhood. There are things about the neighborhood that we like. There are things about the neighborhood that we don't like. Some of us, myself, have been here our entire life. We've seen the neighborhood change. Uh, but we still act as a neighborhood. It's a residential neighborhood as far as I'm concerned, but it's a residential neighborhood that has a character, and the character involves things like the festivals that someone mentioned. Uh, it involves the pastry shops, the restaurants, and good and bad come with all of that. But you want to know what? You're all here because you love it, because it's a great place to live, and I guarantee at least half of you in the room had friends visit you this weekend so that you could go sit at one of the restaurants uh, or come and go to a pastry shop or just visit you at home after walking around the neighborhood. So what we're saying is that it's all part of one fabric. You don't hear little pieces and say, you know, we're going to keep this little corner, you know, with the gas station. It's only going to be an empty gas station because we like it as an empty gas station. And I don't know about anyone else, but after a brutal winter this weekend, most people I know, including myself, walked around, stopped in an outdoor patio, either had coffee and breakfast, or had something to eat. It's why this community is as popular as it is. You have thousands of visitors, whether it's the Freedom Trail, whether it's the restaurants, whether it's just the fact that they want to see the North End. And again, we fully understand. People live up above nearly every single restaurant in this neighborhood. Some people like that, and some people don't. We're not trying to make this, you know, a crisis for anyone. But quite honestly, if it were as bad as someone cast, and we have roughly 90 restaurants in here, uh, this would be an eight bomb site because no one can live here. And I don't think that's the case. You can't find an apartment. You can't find empty storefronts usually. It's popular because people love the entire apartment. So I ask you to keep that in mind. We're not, you know, fragmented. And we're one neighborhood. I want to support. Tom Cornell, see you in the first. What's your motion? 
due to the concerns of the resident, I make a motion to oppose an application for appeal to the Boston Zoning Board to change the legal occupancy from a gas station to offices in a restaurant with seasonal outdoor seating. I second I, that motion. I make a motion to support. There's already a motion on the table. I, when you asked for a motion, he made a motion. He made the first motion. I'm going to make a motion. I just want to, want to say one thing. So say one thing. My name is Michael DeLaRusso, 24th Fleet Street, lifelong resident of the North End. I've been coming to these meetings. I'm a general contractor. I am the general contractor on this project. If it proceeds. I've been coming to this board for a long time. I've had nothing but pleasurable experiences with each and every one of you in the past board members. This particular time, it seems as though a gentleman had the floor for about half an hour with a slideshow. And I don't remember any other opposing people. I have, a, I have a biased opinion. I'd like to see the project go forward. But if there's anyone in this board that has a residency or ownership of a direct abutting or, or a concern about this project and is opposing it, I don't think they should be allowed to vote. That's number one. Because this gentleman, was able to present a half an hour show on how he didn't want it. And I have I have a sense that he has something to do with people on this board, and I don't know who. So that person shouldn't be allowed to vote. I don't appreciate that, and that was something that shouldn't have been allowed. A quick five minute thing should have been allowed, not a half hour monologue about noise and rats. We live in a city, city of Boston, North End. Everybody's got rats and this and that and problems with everything. I don't appreciate this board, this board, allowing that. Okay. And I said enough. Thank you. There's been a motion. There's been a motion. It's been seconded. All in favor of opposing um, the current proposal say aye. All opposed? Wait a minute, time Are we opposing or approving? I approve. Well, all opposed to opposing. All opposed to the current motion. All opposed to the current motion. Who's? So there's been a motion. Four people have supported voting down the motion. Is anybody in favor of it? Down the motion. Wait a second. Now you have to make a motion to either approve. There's been a motion to oppose. Should we take the vote again? Well, there was a motion. There was a motion to oppose the proposal. Four people supported the motion to oppose the proposal. Now he's asking if. If whoever wants a vote to, to oppose the opposes the, oppose the opposition, you oppose your surprise. Okay, you can put it that way. <laughs> Three. 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 Exactly. Well, that's your interpretation. That's exactly what it is. That's not an interpretation. It's exactly what it is. I'm only repeating what he said. I'm not making it up. You have to reconsider. I don't run the board. He runs the board. So he has, right now, he has five opposed to the motion and four in favor. I say the motion does not pass. So if you should do it again, you can take another motion. I think everyone should be quiet. Can you make the motion again? Yeah, no, we can't make the motion. Bill, we can do this your way or my way, but I'm opposed to changing the zoning. You have to follow the rules. Okay. The rules now are if someone wants to make a motion to reconsider the motion, that motion has to pass. 
before you can take the motion up a second time. Otherwise, it's over. Let's make a motion to oppose the application for appeal. I make a motion to reconsider. Any seconds? All in favor. All in favor. All in favor. All in favor. All in all right, I make a motion. I make a motion now. Yes. Motion to oppose an application for appeal to the Boston Zoning Board to change the legal occupancy from gas station to offices and restaurant with seasonal outdoor seating. Second. Mr. President. May I? We're in the middle of the vote. vote. All right, after the vote, there's, there's a discussion, of course, Robert Bruce. So let me ask you this, just so, just for clarification, I'm not, I, I get it. What was the motion for reconsider? What was the carry? Just so I can write it down. Sir, my record. No. Who, who voted in favor of the motion to reconsider? Who voted to oppose it? That's all I'm asking. Just so I can, just so I can have it for my record. I'm sorry. What's that? Everybody on the board. Everybody on the board was unanimous. Second round. Oh. Sir, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a motion. Okay, motion to oppose an application for appeal to the Boston Zoning Board to change the legal occupancy from a gas station to offices and restaurant with seasonal outdoor seating. Second. All in favor. All opposed. Okay, now I'm voting to deny the motion to change the zoning. Okay, we win again. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to take this opportunity to clarify I'm voting to support the motion to oppose the rezoning change of 420 Commercial Street. There's no hecklers here right now, so I can pass it.